need the quick clean is on the SVRS pump. You go in there and try to clean that thing at, at 3,000 RPM, as soon as that vacuum head gets stuck to the bottom, it's going to trigger that SVRS alarm. Mm -hmm. right. Now you're waiting so 30 seconds or 2 minutes or whatever for it to restart or you're going back to the reset. <coughs> so it really came into play. It doesn't disable the SVRS. Keep that in mind. It does not disable it. And, and SVRS, but, everybody can know that suction vacuum release system. That's the anti entrapment system so built into the pump. If it since there's somebody sitting on the main drain, it's going to stop the pump. Or when the back head gets stuck, stop. it doesn't know the difference. So as soon as that triggers, so that's why we came up with that. And it works great. I mean, a lot of a lot of the cleaners first, hey, I can't ever clean the pool. Well, okay, we came up with a nice feature for you. Just, you know. Chances are you're still trying to pull too much water through an inch and a half water hose, you know, vacuum hose, and it's not really doing anything for you anyway. So slow the pump down a little bit. So that that's what the quick clean feature is for. And I urge you to use it because you really will. Uh, work really like it. Really well. Yeah, you use it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Any yeah. one of my pools that have that, I. Yeah, especially use. SVRS is the, is the idea behind it. And you'll no. you'll learn to low, learn what. So once that. that's programmed in, you just hit the quick clean that's button, it. and you get the thirty or forty minutes that you set. Yep, that's cool. Yep, it over, over, over. and it'll go right. back to whatever all the regular program. Whatever it was that doing that before. Time. Yep. Because I've used the feature, I didn't know how to program it, and some of them were like 10 minutes. Yeah, I think only be halfway through. It yeah, I think the shot. default from the factory is 10 minutes. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I don't know what, what the speed was 3450. Yeah. So that usually on a three horsepower pump is not going to work. If you close all the other, you know, if you close all the skimmers, other skimmers and main drain, and you hook that hose up to that thing, you know, it's, yeah. right. It will go to SVRS then. Um, it, yes. <laughs> you know, on on filters. We want to know what the filter pressure is when the filter is clean, mm -hmm. and so we want to have the same RPM that we're well, measuring that by. So what I said is I'd, I'd like 2,500 to be uh, what everybody is looking at the filter pressure. Uh -huh. So we could set our quick cleans for 2,500. That's probably a pretty good probably. vacuum rate. Probably. And then that's what you're going to be looking at so that you know what your true filter pressure is. Because if we clean the pool. And we mark it down at 2,500, and then you're doing 3,400 on vacuuming, or you know, just looking at the pump or at the filter at 3,400. It's going to say something different. It's not going to give you the true. We want every time we look at it, we're measuring filter <coughs> pressure to be the same RPM. So let's do 2,500 on quick. Yes. No thing. A lot of times different people come in and clean a pool when you're absent and for some reason when they get there the variable speed pumps running at a different RPM so they mark it down and say oh clean pressure is supposed to be 11 and it's running at 19 it needs a clean <coughs> right. and then I come back later and when I see it running again at a lower RPM then it's running at 11 it doesn't look like it needs right. a filter correct clean. yeah because that same theory Half the speed's half the flow, but it's a quarter of the pressure. Okay. Right. So it's all exponential as right. it steps down. So yeah. So I mean, there's a couple of different ways you guys can go about this clean filter, dirty filter thing, and that's you know I, I think what Herschel said you know setting the quick clean to all be the same you know is a good way to do it, or just make sure you always set one of the speeds to be a reference. So if it's if you like 2,500 RPM to determine if the, the filter's clean or dirty, that's a good one. So if you need to push a button to get a higher R RPM during the priming cycle uh -huh. to get it all primed up, then it's primed and you've let out the air, then do you have to go back to quick clean to let to see what the pressure is going to be at the 2,500? Yes. That's the uniform number? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if that's what you guys choose, or you can make one of the speeds that, <coughs> that number as well. Do you remember? Do you guys remember the old version of it? the four by one sixty? Just four buttons, no thing on it. I think I have one of those. It's yeah. just a They're start and stop switch. Yeah. And then the four. I mean, those those haven't been out for at least five or six years now, I think. So there's still a bunch of them running. But people used to ask me how to set that up because you, you have no idea. And those did require a time clock. I always told people choose your four speeds with a clean filter: five, ten, fifteen, and twenty pounds. 
I always thought that worked pretty well. <laughs> mm. Right? I mean, 20 pounds, is, you don't really want a filter to be running over that anyway. Hopefully your pressure gauge works. Hopefully, the pr yeah, <laughs> replace the pressure gauge if necessary. And that, that's why I used to tell people to set them up. And that would give you a good <coughs> reference point, you know, three weeks from now. Well, I know I set speed three up at, at 15 pounds, but now it's 18 pounds. Right? So right. that kind of gives you a reference point that way as well. Um, so questions about quick clean and the features? So push escape a couple times, we should be at the features button, the features menu. Push the down arrow, priming. Okay, select, it should be enabled. Everybody see enabled? Okay. You could disable priming, why would you want to disable priming? What scenario would you even think you'd want to disable priming? Because I can only come up with one ever. That's flood suction. The pump's below water level. We don't need it. We don't need that pump to crank up. I mean, that's, that pump's going to always have water flowing through it, right? So you could disable priming there. I don't know if any other reason you want to disable priming. Read, read that again, what you just said. Flooded suction. The pump is actually below water level. You know, you take the lid off, and water flows out that pump. There's there's no so, reason to set so the priming. So the pool is at a higher elevation than the pump. Correct. Okay. That's not very often on a residential, but it does happen. Okay. Commercial, it's pretty popular. They put the equipment down in a vault. Down in right. Um, if you know, so let, let's. <coughs> we're already enabled on this one. Are, are you guys enabled on that one? All of those priming. Okay, so push the down arrow. Okay, so it's going to say maximum prime time of 11 minutes. Okay, so that's saying at this point, this thing's going to run for 11 minutes trying to pull prime. If it can't in 11 minutes, it's going to shut off and, and error out and say uh, <coughs> priming timeout. Now, you can change that, and I've had to change it up to as high as 20 minutes before because of one that was about six feet higher than water level and a four inch line for a huge slide. And that thing would take about every bit of 18 or 19 minutes to prime. And that's okay. Well, yeah, I mean, it was pulling water. It wasn't the most ideal situation. I, you know, I didn't tell them to put that, that pump that much higher than water level. I don't like to see that at all. But um, So you can change the priming time if you have one that, that is higher than water level and takes a while to prime. But if it's set for 11 and it primes in 2, does it, it automatically it, Yeah, it out? overrides that. And it, okay. it, what happens is when you're running it, if you look on the screen, it'll say priming. Mm -hmm. As soon as it really primes, even if it's a minute, it'll pop and say running schedule five. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Yeah. Or yeah. running speed That's three what or whatever it, it is. Right. <clears throat> if you hit the down arrow once, you see primed sensitivity. Okay. If you put this on a pool that has maybe questionable suction lines, maybe a little bit of suction, you know, a little bit of bubbles being pulled in all the time, and you have it at prime sensitivity one. There's a real good chance it's never going to see that it's primed. Prime sensitivity, the lowest number, okay, this is important, the lowest number is the hardest for it to prime. The it, it goes from 1 to 100. If you go, if you take it to the highest, it'll sense it's primed when it's barely pulling anything in, okay, which is not good. But sometimes <coughs> on an older pool, somewhere between 40 and 45, 50 is a good number that allows it to properly prime and sense the right amount, maybe if there's some air leaks and things like that. So, um, but one can be... So um, 50 is good? Yeah, 40 to 50 seems to be a good range. You know, it, you get much over that and it, it, it starts to think it's primed when it's not, and that's not good, especially if it's an SVRS pump. Because then it's going to error out on SVRS instead of erroring out on priming, right? Mm -hmm. We don't want that to happen. So, priming delay, um, that's, um, I think that's 20 seconds, no, that's 20 minutes. So, it'll, you can change that, so um, if it errors out and doesn't prime, it'll try to restart in 20 minutes. Um, okay, let's hit escape, and uh, we're under priming, let's go to antifreeze. And let's push select. It is enabled on all of them. <coughs> okay. Let's push the down arrow. What speed do we want it to kick on? 
when we freeze. This is okay, guys. If you're gonna if you're gonna screw up one of the settings on this, let's not have it be this one. <laughs> Thousand RPM, I think, is what it comes from the factory. Personally, because I don't know how how clean the filter is. You know, I don't know what's going on at this pool all the time. You guys don't know what's going on at this pool all the time. You're there once a week. You know. Let's set that reference up pretty high. Let's let's maybe take it. You know, 24, 25, 2600 RPM for freezing. I realize it's not saving as much money as if we could run it at 1100 RPM. If you guys have a face-to-face -face with your homeowners and say, if we have a four-day freeze and this thing's set at 1100 RPM, you're going to like your electric bill a lot better than set at 2500 RPM for four days. <coughs> However, <laughs> if your filter is dirty or your skimmer is really packed full of stuff, you're not going to be moving any water. But if they don't have any trees, their filters clean all the time, they're that kind of a homeowner, and you can have this discussion about setting this thing at 11 or 1200 RPM for trees, go for it. They're going to love it. Okay, how about for simplicity, we do 2500 on that one, too. So That's up to you guys. Clean and anti-freeze set for 2500. Completely up to you guys. Higher the speed, the better for freeze, you know, just, <coughs> just, 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 just in case, right? Okay, so, and you know, just hit select, you can go in and change that. Now let's hit the down arrow. This is the one that's very important to me. It says set temperature, right? Pump temperature. Okay, it's an internal freeze sensor. It comes set from the factory at 40 degrees. If you leave it at 40 degrees, depending on where it's sitting on the house and everything else, I will promise you if you leave it set at 40 degrees, you're not going to freeze anything up. But it's probably going to turn on around 29 or 30 degrees. It hasn't been not <coughs> cold enough, long enough that that's going to make any difference. It's about a 10 degree temperature difference from what the internal temperature on this is and what the actual outside air temperature is. The other thing is people start to freak out about this. My pump's not running. It's 31 degrees. It's 31 degrees at the airport. What's the temperature right over there on the side yeah. of the house next to your pump? Could still be 38, yeah. right? And probably is. Would you set it at 50 then? 50. I, I would set it at 50. Everybody says there's a 50. Okay, that should have it kick on around like an easy toucher or IntelliTouch does, somewhere between 36, 37, 38 degrees. Okay? Well, if the homeowner complains then it says, well, this thing's running all night, and I'm never even getting to 32, well, that's where you can have the conversation with them and say, well, we know 50 was kicking it on at about 38, so let's take it down 5 degrees, set it at 45. Right? But you can have the homeowner do that if they want to, if you feel safer about it. And that's, that's the way I set them all up. We had the discussion about freeze protection. We went through that polar vortex, what, seven times last year we got to the teens in Dallas? I did not have people calling me telling me a free production did not work on this pump. There's an awful lot of them out there. And believe me, I would have known. Yeah. You know, when we have freezes like that year, the, 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 uh, the Super Bowl was here, that week of the Super Bowl, and the power was out. Of course, I got all kinds of calls that freeze protection had failed. It's like, Power's out. Hello. Yeah, power. No, the power wasn't out at my house. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. <laughs> There's ways to find that out too. Um, but I did. I do not have issues with this. Um, if it's if you set the freeze protection, and that's why I like this pump so much more than the Superflow VS right now. I get a lot more now that I know about it. 